Tom. This is simple pencil art. Uh, first thing I want to speak about is a uh, file folder, plastic file folder from Dollar General Store, and I cut it up, cut so I could have a full sheet like this, and I cut a pattern like that. See it in the viewfinder. Then I purchased some glue stick. It's uh, acid-free, washable. Uh, and all that good stuff. It also has uh, quick drying and non-toxic. So I, I put the glue on the shield and then I simply stick it to my hand and I'm able to slide it around. Uh, the full shield works just as well as if you're on the table and I'll speak about table versus easel here in a minute but uh, for for the shield uh, we're used this way and uh, and we can uh, and we'll we protect our work whatever work we might have under there and we'll be able to protect our work uh, so that those are two handy little tips that you might want to try out yourselves uh, shading back and forth uh, there's a lot of people that sit there and uh, they if you do this and or this and you get those start and stop points and your shade ends up your shade ends up darker on each end and lighter in the middle or if you do the, something like that and th those are all the incorrect ways of shading back and forth uh, in the art of uh, lead pencil drawing uh, with uh, one of the authors, uh, Silway, Solway, uh, he suggests rapid notes and rapid art. And what he's referring to is as these artists back in the day became artists, uh, they went into production artwork for publishing companies. And it was a low entry start job for the artist, uh, for animation, picture drawing or whatever, something needs it illustrated. And uh, of course they couldn't spend, you know, 30 hours on one drawing. Uh, they would have to produce five to 10 drawings probably, if not more per week. So they would have to figure out a way to shade correctly quickly. Uh, the way you do that is start there and come back. Start there and come back. Now as you practice this method of rapid drawing or rapid shading, uh, you don't want to get your, you want to do it correctly each and every time. And you go slow at first. And then as you get quicker, you, you can get a little quicker and you can shade a large area fairly quickly if you're doing, uh, if you really concentrate and you can shade a large area relatively simply. And, uh, I'm not very good at it because I haven't practiced it, practiced this method. So, uh, but that's what they're talking about. And a few books that I've read spoke about it, and that is what they are referring to is rapid shading. And you want to do it consistently and constantly, correctly, at whatever shade you want. To be at if you want to be light so you can be light or dark or however you want to do it but you want to practice one shade at a time quickly in a, in that kind of an area in a shorter amount of time uh, it'll reduce the time on your drawing immensely uh, the next thing that I have are uh, large grids. Uh, 
I started out old school, and of course, uh, with the pen, pen use a pen or a dividers or a ruler and try to measure like that, and uh, that's how I grew up in the public school system and in my artwork. We didn't have all these fancy things, acetate sheets, and well, we had them, but they weren't affordable. Uh, so I have the acetate sheets, and these are one inch grids, and I had to make sure that I marked them, T1, T2, uh, top one, top two, uh, to keep them straight, and because the media that you're drawing on may be shorter than your grid, and plus, um, and in width-wise also, versus that one, so you want to always have one reference point, one reference point, uh, one and two, so I can, uh, so you and I can have the picture correctly on the thing. I also have a center mark on each one. Uh, that helps me out uh, quite a bit. So it, for, instead of counting from the top or down, you just go from the center out, and that will works out very well for the large grids. Uh, for the smaller grid, I took that same plastic folder the other side and I, of course, I cut the, cut my shield out of this center and uh, made the frame for the other one and I took the graph and I made half inch squares with the X and of course I have horizontal and vertical and I mark the verticals and I can actually set that on top of my picture with that I have my one inch grid and I can make those half inch grid circles and I can get a little bit more detailed now on my picture if I need to on my drawing uh, I have a paintbrush tip uh, this is kind of like a paintbrush off of a, uh, it's a stiff paintbrush, it, it's, it's kind of like a typewriter eraser paintbrush type tip and it's good for sweeping away uh, erasers and dust or whatever I need to uh, swipe away. But I, on the other end, uh, you have to be careful because there might be a little bit of uh, manufacturing uh, ridge there or a little dimple that will cut into your paper so you might have to feel that and make sure it's sanded and nice and smooth. Uh, two different things for this is uh, wrinkles. I can do wrinkles that way or I can do wrinkles that way. Uh, if I do it this way the old school and there we go and then this here I can just follow along just in case you want that the darkness but you don't want the uh, wide your wide uh, lost it uh, your wide line of your pen pencil that you're using like a heavy charcoal pencil because those go soft fairly quickly and you, you can erase that to however you need to and this one here the one that we went over top of our pencil mark and that that's fairly well and you can erase that a little bit more if you want to uh, but that's another good tip uh, upright on the easel versus your table uh, if you're on your table like this and you're bending down and you're you're drawing your your sketching and you're you're doing all the things that you need to do over here and uh, after hours of doing this uh, you're going to be very 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 tired and uh, if you're going to do this for a long time, you're going to wear yourself out. 
just by working off a table. Of course, we've all learned it, we all do it, and uh, that's what we do. Uh, the correct way is to work on an easel straight up, and you can actually get uh, the close and you can get detailed. The other thing is perspective and, and uh, focus. When I was drawing LeBron James on this one here, I had, had this down on the table and I started drawing and sketching and after about a half an hour my neck started hurting and uh, the other thing is I was having a difficult time judging the distance because the perspective I, w I was looking at him on a, looking at my drawing at an angle like this rather than face, face up so I instinctively put him on my easel and started working and it took me two or three hours to finish. So working upright on an easel is much better for your back and uh, if you want to do four or five hours as possible and uh, that does does very well and plus you can draw a lot easier on with an easel. This is a Weber easel from Blick.com uh, got it on a sale awesome little easel cost like $35 and uh, I don't have any problems with it uh, I've had it for about a week and a half now and uh, it's doing very well uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that it slides uh, I'll have to get some uh, rubber feet for it, some sticky feet for underneath they'll or suction cups or something so I'll do that but uh, that's the only thing I don't like about it but otherwise it's fantastic love it and it's a good deal uh, always when you're uh, drawing and you're starting a new sketch make sure you have test strips uh, you can uh, do this you can make your uh, make a little uh, patch of uh, graphite and put your tortillion in it and now you can shade. Uh, the other thing is if you're working out some type of a curve for an eyelid or uh, uh, some other feature around the mouth or nose you know, uh, the nose is the one that I always have difficulty with getting the correct, uh, the correct, correct curve around each edge. So I'll use these to uh, practice and get the right one that I need to do. Uh, also, other way shading. Uh, I've done this one to get the idea of a shade that was on LeBron James and uh, worked out okay for me uh, because uh, I had to get in in the earpiece and I wanted to see see what the dark versus light or light versus dark you see I have two different shades of light here and the darkness on this shading here so I wanted to see the perspective on those two things and uh, I kind of made like a little shadow box so I could see and I just covered it up if I had to and uh, it worked out good I got what I needed out of it so always keep a test strip beside you and of course a test strip of uh, maybe the pencils you might be using so you know what shade each one is uh, the next thing is the art of drawing in lead pencil by Jasper Salway uh, this was one of those things that I grasped and I couldn't understand right away what he was talking about Thought, and this is the way they used to do things because they didn't have photographs and what have you so they had to rely on two things they had to re either sit there and draw sketch the the scene as quick as they could because if it was moving you know in daylight and whatever it, all those different things uh, uh, variables that could come into a drawing they had to do it fairly quickly within 30 minutes at least or an hour if not 
five or ten minutes if it's like a sunset. So uh, I was reading in chapter five of The Art of Drawing in Lead Pencil, and uh, chapter five said simple rapid notes, and they're rapid notes for under five to ten minutes to take a picture basically of a scene or outside environment. Uh, the other addition is that you're able to go out and get, uh, uh, you can take your rapid note and then go back to your studio or your home or whatever your uh, uh, area where you draw your art and uh, you can put some time and thought into your work uh, so you're not so rushed. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing about a rapid note. You can take a rapid note and it'll be done. Uh, you can also you can when you get back to your studio or your uh, art area, uh, you can work out and experiment with your sketches for general effect and balance of your composition. Uh, you can't do that out when you're sitting there drawing and you're trying to capture a scene, you can't sit there and work out a bunch of different things. You don't have time to sit there and focus on one little, this, how to get the curve right on that uh, dimension on the, on whatever decoration that's on the building or if that's what your focus is. You have to be able to sketch it and move on. Uh, not that detailed, uh, just quickly. Uh, also, after you get your uh, rapid note done, and after you worked out all your sketching, uh, you can start on your finished drawing. So now you have some ideas, and that was the process back then for uh, actual artists in their drawings and portraits and what have you. Uh, so uh, that that's it in a nutshell, basically, and. Uh, the first, let's look at the rapid note reference symbols. And uh, the example note symbols are H for horizon, DIS for distance, MD for middle distance, W for white or highlight, Ds for degrees of darkness, you got 1D, 2D, and 3D, arrow for sunlight. Uh, direction, uh, G plus an arrow for graduation of sky, grayscale from darkest to lightest portion, L for light, and I, L for intense light, R, Y, S for rays of light, and uh, greater or less than symbol for the wind direction. Example of a uh, rapid note, example of a finished work. All right, uh, I was looking for the rapid note uh, section in the book, and I kind of, and I found this at Goodwill, and this is an Agora case, A-G-O-R-A -A is the company's name, and they make this for the uh, blind school, so they can read Braille, they'll put plates in there, or an iPod, or whatever, and uh, they'll, they'll put their, the, and they'll read that way. Uh, what I did is I cut some paper because it's almost a perfect window for paper the the sketchbook because the sketchbook is supposed to be like five by seven I believe it is or four and a half by seven and uh, this is uh, four four inches by six and a half inches which is good for practice for me so uh, I'm going to use it and I have a little frame that was the other part so I have like three parts four parts from the one file folder that I can use uh, but and one side's matted and the other side is diamond shaped so I usually look at the matted side so I can actually see and focus and perspective so I'm not trying to cram in a whole bunch of items into my picture that doesn't need to be there I can stay focused on the area that interested me the most at the beginning so I can focus on that in perspective because we wouldn't want to be if I'm, I'm focusing on something that's right there I don't want to be putting in something in my picture that's over there because it's going to throw the picture off automatically just because of the distance and our perspective 
And in one of the books that I'm going to talk about a little later, uh, the author was speaking about uh, perspective and focus and looking in what particular item in the scene that the artist was looking at. If there was a mantle over here and a window over here, if the focus was on the window, that's going to be more detailed and more bright than the mantle is. So uh, the focus is going to be over here. But if the mantle and the uh, fireplace is over here and that's the focus and that's more detailed and that's brighter and the window is going to be less detailed and a little bit more opaque so the focus is going to be over here so the direction of the artist what they're interested in and drawing in is always brighter and more detailed automatically subconsciously it happens so always be aware of that uh, the uh, Rapid Note also has a uh, little notebook, also has uh, my general stuff. I have my pencil sharpener eraser. I just have a basic HBH pencil in there and a ruler. And I believe that's it. So, and uh, uh, that's what I'll take my Rapid Notes on a little later. And that's good. Okay, I have uh, two new books to go over this week. It's uh, Lifelike Drawing in Colored Pencil by Lee Hammond. And I looked through it last night and uh, it's a phenomenal book and it's detailed and it gives step-by-step -step instructions. So uh, that's one of those books that you grab onto and hang on to. Uh, the other one is Drawing and Sketching in Pencil by Arthur L. Guptill. Uh, that's another, it's more of an information book and it's more of a detailed book on how to do things, uh, more of a academic type of drawing and that's uh, going to be interesting as well as paging through that and I, that's how I got onto the per focus and perspective of working verse, on the table versus this uh, he was using uh, examples of a street view and if the artist was looking down the street at the end of the street and uh, that was the focus that the picture that we're drawing is going to be different if our focus was over here at a random building that he might have liked so if the focus was over here so there's two different focuses that we can look at and the drawing is going to come out different and it's going to be placed differently within the piece of paper on, on your thing. So if we had our building that was over on the left here, it's going to be more in the center and that end of the street is going to be down over here. Uh, if our center of the street is our focus, it's going to be right around in here that building that we would have been focusing on is going to be over here and is going to be a little less detailed, a little blurred because our focus is right here. So that's how I got onto this easel and uh, the table it, and difficulties that you might have it, and you really should be working off easel anyway. So it, that was from Dick Blix, I believe, dot com and you can get an easel off of that for relatively inexpensive price. And that's about all I have other than uh, colored pencils. I'm going to be getting into colored pencils. And uh, really cool colors, uh, different colors. So you have a blues and oranges. And hopefully I can uh, learn a little bit more about that. In, in the near future. These are from Rose Art and that's the sky blue and orange I believe. So relatively inexpensive that I bought a long time ago. I've been carrying them around. Uh, this is the other one. This is a high uni art set and it's uh, from Mitsubishi established 1887 
And these are 10B to 10H uh, set. Uh, it's a full spectrum, all 22 degrees. Uh, there's the, and it's, they come unsharpened. And uh, those are the kind of drawings that uh, pencils draw. And you get very intense and uh, uh, intense and very precise with these. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, draw some with those. And those were 28 bucks off of Amazon.com. So you can, might be able to find them cheaper. I don't know, but I, they were on sale. So they say. So that's all about all I have. Uh, just remember, uh, use your hand shield and uh, for your work. Uh, work off an easel and uh, working on our rapid notes, and I'll uh, throw up some pictures for that. Let's talk to you later.